independently of the industry you're working in, there's 99% chance that you need email. That's where most of your tasks and assignments come from and where all communication is currently being made. And while we all know the importance of email, we still treat our inbox like a dump, forgetting that organizing our email inbox can improve productivity, reduce stress levels, and make it easier to find important information on the go. In fact, since most emails can convert into tasks, leaving all that info just randomly piled on your box is actually a really bad habit. But no more, so starting today you can make that nightmare go away in 10 minutes or less. So let's get started with the most important thing, which is starting with a clean slate. So most of my clients have a really hard time getting started on their email because the prospect of delving into hundreds or thousands of emails seems like a nightmare. And well, that's because it is. So if you're starting this journey today, my advice is to start with a clean slate which basically means creating a new folder or label, in case you're using Gmail, call it old archive and click and drag all of your emails into that folder. You can of course go back to the last couple of pages and see if you find a truly relevant email that you need to answer right away. But in case you don't, my advice is to just archive everything into an archive folder. All of that information is still available, so you're not deleting your emails and you can use a search function to search for something in specific, but you are going to empty your inbox just like that. And congratulations, you've now just reached inbox zero. It's easy, right? Now let's see what you have to do next to keep it that way. So secondly, you should be using folders or labels. So after your inbox is magnificently empty, it's time to organize it. My recommendation here is to always remember to not go overboard. Categories shouldn't be created just for the sake of it, but rather to provide you with truly helpful information and reduce turnaround. So go for three or four main categories and only subdivide if needed. For instance, I have a personal folder and a home and family folder on my personal email, but I also have a writing folder for writing related projects. In the writing folder, I have two subfolders dedicated to two specific novels I'm querying. And this is fundamental for me since I really need to quickly find emails for those specific novels and I can't have everything mixed together. For home and family, I can definitely have most emails in one folder only, as they serve only for reference, but I have a specific folder for bills to pay. These are important, as I need to pinpoint them quickly to make sure they're paid and they've already been converted into tasks. Well, with that old archive folder, I like to go back to it to pull up any truly relevant emails and drag them to my new folders leave everything else in there. If you get an email that's not relevant for any of your main categories, you can use this old archive folder to keep that email. That way the email gets saved, but it's not cluttering any of your categorized pages. With tags, I think that they're also important irrespectively of the folders you're using. So consider having tags for to do, follow up and closed. You can create these in your email client as well, whether you're using Outlook, Gmail or anything else. As I was saying before, most emails can be converted into tasks. Now this completely depends on the system you're using, but the truth is most task managers have some sort of integration with email clients, especially Gmail. So for TickTick, for instance, which is the one we usually use, it has a feature that allows you to forward any email you receive to a specific email generated by the app, which will then convert that email to a task in your app. AccuFlow, on the other hand, has a direct integration with Gmail, where you can star an email or activate the AccuFlow label on Gmail to have that email dropped onto your task manager in task format. And remember, if an email is not a task, it can be archived as closed. With most email clients, leaving the files attached to the original message will be the best possible way to find them honestly. And in case you have to download something, my suggestion is to save that file with a naming convention that can pinpoint the email. Using a date system, for instance, is a really good way to make sure this happens. Finally, rather than having a complicated labeling system or a powerful email client, people with incredibly organized inboxes have, most of all, a good email routine. So this usually means two things. You have a dedicated time for email. So rather than constantly checking your inbox throughout the day, you can set specific times dedicated slowly to processing emails. 
For example, you might reserve a half hour in the morning and another in the afternoon to read, respond to, or forward emails as needed. By doing this, you create blocks of focused time for email management. You can reduce interruptions and allow for deeper concentration on other tasks. My recommendation is to block time in your calendar in case you're using any sort of calendar blocking technique, or in case you aren't, you can actually create an alarm on your phone app to remind yourself to check your email at specific times during the day. Also, people who have a really organized inbox manage their emails consistently. Everything we've mentioned before, you have to do it consistently, maybe every day and not every week only. Mail piles up very quickly and the more you let it sit in your inbox, the less likely you are to organize it in a way that truly makes sense. Overall, having your inbox organized doesn't take any sort of time at all. What it matters is that you have a system in place that is very simple, that it's not overwhelming, and you're consistently using the system. This channel focuses on optimizing your time when learning new skills and establishing new habits, and Brilliant offers bite-sized lessons that ensure you acquire real-life skills using practical examples. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for personal and professional growth too. So Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day, with fun lessons you can do whenever you have the time. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. And you know, learning for the sake of learning is great, but it's even better when the time and money you invest actually pays off. For instance, learning more about data content can pay off in so many different industries. This course is perfect for learners of any level to start or continue learning data analysis with a fully built out suite of new content. It will also help you learn how to parse and visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret and gain insight by working with real data sets from sources like Starbucks, Twitter, Spotify, and more. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. And you can learn without feeling like it's another chore. Even if it's a skill you want to learn because you want to be the go-to person in your team, the exercises are so fun and interactive, you won't even notice time is flying by. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Mariana or click on the link in the description box below. And you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next week. Bye guys!